Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. CEO Colin Woodall answers some tough questions about NCBA's role in the beef industry. Plus, see how Corteva is helping ranchers make better decisions when it comes to managing their land and controlling invasive species. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. As the voice of the cattle industry in Washington, the National Cattlemen's Beef Association is making a difference for cattle producers. Every day, the staff in D.C. work on a number of policy and regulatory issues that could impact the U.S. beef industry. We've got an update on what's happening in Washington in this week's Beltway Beef Spotlight. 2020 is off to a great start. On January 1st, we saw the implementation of the U.S.-Japan trade deal, and that takes our tariff from 38.5% down to 9% in just a few years. Now U.S. beef producers are on a level playing field in our number one export market. Also on January 1st, we saw the implementation of new access to the European Union. Now U.S. beef producers have duty-free access to 35,000 metric tons of high-quality beef, and that's an important development for our industry. But probably the most significant thing to happen in a long time was the signing of a U.S.-China trade deal. Now with the signing of that agreement, and here in just a few short weeks, we're going to see a lot of those non-tariff trade barriers that have been applied to U.S. beef, those are going to start to come off. Restrictions on things like the use of hormones, uh, the requirements on traceability, and also those BSE restrictions that have limited our ability to reach growing demand in the Chinese market. China represents 1.4 billion consumers, with a middle class that's bigger than the entire U.S. population. And now that we have fair and competitive access to that market, China will be a top export market for us in just a few years. And another key victory for NCBA was Senate passage of the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. With a vote of 89 to 10, the Senate overwhelmingly supported a trade deal that solidifies our competitive advantage here in North America. We now get to hold on to the duty-free, unrestricted access that we've had to Canada and Mexico under NAFTA, and it brings NAFTA into the 21st century. This is a tremendous victory for NCBA and for the U.S. beef industry, and it could not have been possible without our dues-paying members like you. Over the years, NCBA has dealt with its share of critics. And joining us now to respond to some of those common criticisms is NCBA CEO Colin Woodall. Colin, one long-time concern by some people is that NCBA represents more of the Packers' interest than cattlemen's interest. What do you say to that? Nothing could be further from the truth, because when you look at the leadership of this association, it's made up of cattle producers. Our officers are cattle producers. The committee leadership that we have, these are the people that help foster the discussion on the policy positions that is, this association has. They are cattle producers, and the members of those committees are appointed by the State Cattlemen's Association. They, these are the individuals that are leading this association. They are making the decisions mm -hmm. and ensuring that we are looking out for the welfare of the producer. Because without the producer, we don't have a beef industry. Mm -hmm. But in order to make sure that we're taking care of the producer, we need to be the voice of the entire industry. And we need to know what's going on throughout the entire production chain. That's why we have packers as members, mm -hmm. processors, retailers, equipment manufacturers, crop companies, mm -hmm. uh, animal health companies, in order to make sure that we have those relationships where we can pick up the phone and know what's going on. What are the concerns out there? What are the challenges? With that information, it allows us to serve our members much better. And when you look at it, they only have, they being the Packers, as members, only have seven out of 229 board votes. Because of that, they are not going to drive the discussion. And over the past 15 years of my tenure here at NCBA, I've never seen a Packer actually show up to a board meeting and vote. 
Interesting, interesting. Well, that's, that's helpful clarification because I think that's a misnomer on the part of many people. Another issue that I've heard a lot of, especially on Facebook, is uh, people have issue with NCBA being part of the Global Roundtable of Sustainable Beef. And I, I think the concern that I've had people share with me is because of who else is sitting around that table, other environmental groups that have not always been friendly to the livestock industry and the beef industry. What do you say to people's concerns in that regard? The issue of sustainability is not going away. And we need to make sure that we understand that. It is on the minds of consumers, it's on the minds of retailers, it's on the minds of policymakers in Washington, D.C. And when you look at countries around the world, everybody's talking about sustainability. There's a former president of NCBA who once said, if you're not at the table, you're on the, on the menu. menu. I love that. <laughs> and we need to make sure that we're at the yep. table. And that's why we engage with yep. the U.S. Roundtable for Sustainable Beef and the U.S. Roundtable for Sustainable Beef. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about letting them drive us. Mm -hmm. It's about us being there to hold them accountable and try to sure. influence their perception of what we do. And because of that, we've had an opportunity to work with groups like the World Wildlife Fund. And we believe that we've helped kind of change their perception of mm -hmm the cattle industry and grazing and the great things that we do for the environment. So that's why we are gonna to continue to be engaged in a leadership position because it's about making sure that our story is being told in this whole discussion of sustainability. Let's talk beef checkoff because that's another hot topic. And uh, I have people tell me, why does NCBA control the beef checkoff? Uh, again, what do you say to that criticism? The Cattlemen's Beef Board controls the beef checkoff. And the Cattlemen's Beef Board is made up of cattle producers from across this country that are appointed by the Secretary of Agriculture. And that group makes the decisions on where the checkoff dollars go. Every year in September, the Beef Promotion Operating Committee, which is a portion of the Cattlemen's Beef Board, they meet and they make the decision on which groups get checkoff dollars. We are a contractor One to contractor. the beef check. One of eight contractors. Yeah. So it's not just us. And that's a key component that a lot of people don't understand, mm -hmm. that there are others out there that are also competing for these dollars. Mm -hmm. And we have to go in and we have to pitch our ideas on projects that we think are a good use of the checkoff dollar. And if the members of the Beef Promotion Operating Committee don't agree, then we don't get that money. In fact, this past year, we didn't get all of the dollars that we asked for. Mm -hmm. It's also important to remember that the members of the Beef Promotion Operating Committee are a few of them NCBA members, but a few of them aren't NCBA members. Gotcha. So we do not control the checkoff. Beef industry is a big industry, 700 and some thousand producers made up of all shapes and sizes. What do you say to the criticism of people who say the NCBA organization doesn't really represent the entire beef cattle industry? Yeah, there was a former officer of this association who was a great mentor of mine. And he told me time and time again, the world belongs to those who show up. Yeah. And NCBA is the oldest and largest national trade association of cattle producers. So we, we represent the majority of those who show up. Mm -hmm. So if there's somebody out there that doesn't believe that they have a voice or they don't like what we're doing, come get engaged because we are open to the engagement. As we talked about earlier, we have a very open process that is driven by cattle producers. But you have to show up. You have to actually get engaged for your voice to be heard. And if NCBA is not the organization for you, find another organization. But get engaged because that's the only way that collectively we're going to be able to make sure that our voice as an industry is being heard. So for those who are out there that are staying at home and they're not watching Cattlemen to Cattlemen, sure. they need to make sure that they make that change. But again, of those who are showing up, we do represent the majority of that voice. Very good. And what advice do you have to someone who may be watching, who may have some questions and some issues and may want to delve deeper into some of the topics that you mentioned? What, what should they do? They just need to call us. We're easy to find. Go to our website ncba.org, where you can find the contact information for both the Denver and DC office. Give us a call. Let us know what you're thinking. Ask us some questions. Yeah. We're open. We're more than happy to visit with you. Also, talk to your local Cattlemen's Association and your state beef councils because they're also willing to talk to you. We have nothing to hide. That's why we're doing this segment on the show. We want to make sure that we're being open and transparent with everybody, mm -hmm. members and otherwise. So give us a call. I think it's critical. There's a lot of people who would like to see the beef industry go away. And in the words of one of our founding fathers, either we all hang together or we'll all hang separately, right? That's exactly right. There's a lot of detractors out out there and we need to make sure we're doing everything that we can to fight cohesively to preserve this great way of life that we have. Agreed. Thank you for coming, Collar.
Thank you, Kevin. Now, if you'd like to stay up to date on all the key issues and events from Washington, D.C., one way is by becoming a member of NCBA. When you join, you'll get the Beltway Beef Newsletter, a weekly update straight from Washington that provides valuable insights on the key policy initiatives that may impact your business. To join, just call 1-866-233-3872, or you can visit the website ncba.org. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll show you some exciting technology from Corteva that can help you better manage your land and fight back against troublesome mesquite. Stay with us. We'll be right back. For commercial cow-calf producers, crossbreeding with Gelvy and Balancer is the smart, reliable, and profitable choice. Gelvy and Balancer females offer maternal superiority through increased fertility, greater longevity, and more pounds of calf weaned per cow exposed. In the feed yard, Balancer cattle deliver increased performance, improved feed efficiency, and excellent carcass merit. Balancer adds the pounds, make the grade, and deliver the value. Gelvy and Balancer, the smart, reliable, and profitable choice. Find out more at the website gelvy.org. Cow-calf producers understand the importance of providing adequate grass and forage for their cattle. But that job can be a challenge when an invasive species like mesquite is taking over the landscape. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter has a look at some exciting technology from Corteva that is helping ranchers control mesquite. Mesquite has long been the enemy of ranchers who want more grass for their cattle and landowners working to provide an improved landscape for wildlife. Now, Corteva AgriScience has developed a powerful new tool to use in the fight to control mesquite and eventually other problem plants. It's called Landvisor. So Landvisor is a decision support tool that uses sophisticated imagery and integrates data with personal experience from a personal consultant to help ranchers make better decisions. Most ranchers, most landowners know their land. They drive through it. They look at it, but they see it from the roads. What we're doing is giving them a little bit different perspective using imagery, uh, satellite imagery, aerial imagery, other types of imagery, and bringing in the data behind that imagery to help them see their land from a different perspective and see parts of their land, parts of the, the information that, that is given them that ha to help them make better decisions. The cool thing with Landvisor is that it is a decision support tool. So what this means is a cattleman that's been on the ranch for five generations or five days, he can learn something from it. So we can take sophisticated imagery, we can take a personal consultation and many ranch visits, and we can put together a specialized plan for the rancher. We can look at things from brush management to species that are important, whether he's ranching for wildlife. We can identify where his more productive grounds are, and we can create a plan that produces the biggest return on his investment for the spraying that he does with mesquite and some other species down the road. Aimed first at mesquite, Landvisor will ultimately be a tool land managers will be able to use against a variety of invasive species. We're launching Landvisor this year in the southwest on mesquite, and there's a reason for that. If we can do mesquite, there's a lot of different things we can do with Landvisor. The potential of Landvisor is really endless. It's a technology that we can take into a lot of different areas. We do have plans for expansion of Landvisor. We're going to be looking at different species in the coming years, prickly pear and some other ones that, that we'll be looking at, as well as other industries in the U.S. Landvisor uses state-of-the-art digital technology teamed with one-on-one -on -one expertise from Corteva to give cattlemen and land managers a customized approach to reaching their goals, whether that's growing more grass or sculpting the landscape to benefit wildlife. Several Texas ranchers now have first-hand experience seeing the value Landvisor can bring to their operations. 
It was a game changer to me because I didn't know the soil samples, I didn't know the density, and I didn't know the potential that this ranch pot had at that time. And so looking at that program and you could see on that deal, the potential and the potential gain, that changed everything. That opened up my eyes to what I need to do to make this ranch a better ranch and to leave it better than I found it. So Landvisor came in and did some satellite images of the place. He really zeroed in on what areas will, will produce the most uh, bang for our buck and um, he helped us to see where the highest density of plants were. Landvisor is a very personal interaction so this starts with communicating with a pasture specialist we'll take a look at the land we can create boundaries and we can chart exactly what they're looking at we can look through the data we can find areas where productions can be better and a lot of times a rancher will think it's somewhere that it's not so therefore this is uncovering a different layer that a rancher cannot tell from driving around in a pickup truck or walking through his mesquite. Well, he took all the guesswork out for us. We didn't really know wh where to start, and um, he helped us to really pinpoint that. We could have invested a lot of money in some other areas and n not realized it until several years down the road that it wasn't gonna do anything for us. So we hope that we'll be able to run some more cows on the place. We're thinking that it may increase our carrying capacity by about 44%. And that's just one little area that we targeted and that's gonna increase the carrying capacity for the whole ranch by 44%. So those are some big numbers that we're, we're excited about. I'm not gonna waste that money spraying someplace where it's not good soil and I'm not gonna have that good grass. So they're, they're right there, I'm saving money on that. Looking at where the better grass is and where I can improve that land and then showing me how many more cattle on there, then I can budget everything I have out and I can also maybe look into the future as to how much money I'll be making off that little bit of land and, and what my cattle need to maybe make for that so that the spraying is paid for by the cattle. And uh, so that, it, it just really helps a lot. Not only does Landvisor give landowners the ability to target their investment where it will provide the greatest forage production, it also helps guide the timing of spraying. What's unique about Landvisor and the mesquite control of the future is that we're being able to monitor it pre during and post treatment. So therefore the condition, the plant vigor, soil temperature, we can look at multiple different types of imagery to see this. And we have a database to understand where the sweet spot is to spray. If we hadn't have used land visor and I would have sprayed just thinking this is the time to spray, I wouldn't have got a kill and I would have wasted my money. And then I might've looked and said, well, that doesn't work and I don't know what they're talking about, but it, that's not the case. This lets you know when is the best time to do this and when you're gonna get that kill. It really is kind of industry breaking in terms of what we do with it from there because we can actually come in then and do some post-treatment analysis as well. So we will come back in, we will look at it a year later, use that in the planning process for the next year so it builds from one year to the next. The more information you have about these plants and, the, and your land, and I, it, you're better prepared to, to come up with a uh, plan of attack against these mesquite and other plants that you want to get rid of. And without that, you're, you know, you're kind of guessing and you're going to waste money. And as a rancher, you don't want to do that. <laughs> In Texas, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now, if you'd like more information about the new Landvisor tool that can help you make better, more profitable decisions to improve your forage, then just visit the website landvisor.corteva.us. And if you're at this year's cattle industry convention and NCBA trade show in San Antonio, be sure to stop by the Corteva booth to see the Landvisor technology in action. Up next on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll look at some of the many benefits you get by becoming a member of NCBA. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Your land is more than a business. It's a heritage that has been passed down from those who tended it before you, by those who shaped it, changed it, and cared for it. Your land has a legacy, one that you carry on, but also one you build on. At Corteva AgriScience, we are the stewards of a lasting legacy. We have a responsibility to Dow AgroSciences to maintain the relationships and trust they built and to build upon those foundations. 
to help you care for your land, to provide innovations that help you protect the hard work and investment you've poured into it, to help you build a legacy that can be passed on for generations to come. Corteva AgriScience. Welcome back. One of the most important things cattlemen and women can do is join the fight to protect our industry by becoming a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. And here to tell us more about the value and some of the benefits of membership is Marvin Kokash, NCBA's Senior Vice President of Corporate Relations. So Marvin, let's talk a little bit about just generally the value of becoming an NCBA member and, and why it's so important for those of us who are stakeholders in this industry to be active members of NCBA. You uh, see and hear it all the time. Uh, any news channel you watch, uh, we've got to be in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. uh, Cattlemen, uh, they need a voice there. And that's, at the end of the day, that's the number one reason cattlemen need to join. To, so we have a unified voice. Uh, we've got full-time staff of 18 in Washington, D.C. Uh, they're burning a lot of boot leather yep. uh, representing uh, your interests on Capitol Hill. And uh, members are really the, the, they're the folks that set the, set the agenda for NCBA. With real live issues that affect us every day, and they've had a lot of good wins. Now, right. let's talk a little bit. I understand you've brought on a new sponsor, and that means great things, particularly for new members. Is that right? Oh, we've got some great incentives for new members, and I really appreciate uh, Norbrook has come on mm -hmm. with a product called Epper Zero. Okay. Um, it's a, it's a pour-on product. All the research we've done, virtually all cattlemen uh, deworm their cattle. Yep. And so it's, it's, it's a great product. So Kevin, when we do this, yeah. I want to have you do a little math. Let me, I can do math, Marvin. All right, because I, I, we went to the same university, but I think that you did better <laughs> in math than I did. Well, so, let's talk about, well, well, first of all, what does it cost to be a member? So base membership uh, for us is $150. Okay. And uh, $150. You know, that, that's a great deal in yeah. itself. Just. Just, just for the reasons we just talked about in D.C. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now, I looked online this morning yeah. and to check out, you know, what's the value of this Epper Zero? Right. Kevin, this is a 2.5 liter bottle of pour-on, mm -hmm. $230. And new members get new members a free get a bottle. A free bottle wow. of this. Yeah, 230 bucks. So plus $230, we're yeah. already net ahead. You're, you're, you're already in the good. Yeah. And, and also, by the way, new members... Thanks to our friends at Roper, Stetson, and Tinnell, they get this wonderful coupon for half off. So That's phenomenal. If you take a look at these little lovely, those are pretty nice boots. Yep, yeah, Kevin, they're for five hundred bucks. Okay, half offs two hundred fifty. I can do that math too. Two hundred fifty dollars. So, so right. already we're at four hundred and eighty dollars if my math is correct. And four hundred eighty bucks to the good. Right. Well, well exactly. Less than yeah, less one hundred fifty dollars. So you're way to the good. Three thirty. So, exactly. So it's a fantastic incentive. Uh, again. You're going to get it as a new member, you'll get a, to join. And by the way, i also uh, going to give all of our viewers a great incentive. Okay. So if when they go to join, go yep. join online, or if they call into our number, if they mention the word Marvin. Yes. They're going to get a second Roper and Stetson coupon. That's impressive. Coupon. So, but you need to remember, use the promo code Marvin. Marvin. Everybody can remember that's that. That's right. Everybody. And we, that's the easiest thing. And we could help people out. It's like, if you type in the promo code Marvin, another 50% off, uh, and second there's a lot of great people. merchandise oh, at Roper uh, Sets. Jackets, jeans, boots, you name it. But let's talk about current members. Yeah. This is the benefit for new members. Yeah. What do current members get? So, uh, so all of our members, uh, first and foremost, it's about communication, right? Yeah. So our, our new member, or all of our members get the this, this publication, right. the directions, we, we publish this twice, twice a year. Twice a year. Mm -hmm. uh, incredible great, pub, uh, great information. Yes. And then uh, this comes out once a month. Yep. Uh, the National Cattlemen, full of information about what your organization is doing on your behalf. You bet. And also some great uh, checkoff information, what the beef checkoff's doing. So it really keeps us in touch with the consumer. And this well. alone, again, you know, most magazines, you're going to pay $50 to $80 a year for a That's subscription right. to that information. That's exactly but, right. But there are actual valuable benefits, also discounts and so forth, available for current members, correct? Yes, there are. You know, I've got my eye on this great varmint rifle at Cabela's. <laughs> okay. You know, just manage the things that we do as ranchers. Yeah. Um, there's this rifle's a thousand dollars at Cabela's. Okay. As a member of NCBA, I get fifteen percent off a Cabela's or Bass Pro gift card. Right. So all of a sudden, boom! I just saved my, my annual membership is paid. 
And there are also, as we've talked before on this show, if you're in the market for machinery and other things, Cabela's, I mean, there are lots of member discounts. Yeah. Before we go, I, I want to say, ask one thing. As you think about this convention this week, mm -hmm. uh, this next week, uh, what are some of the, 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 the most important uh, things that people should uh, look up and take part in during the week at first, San Antonio? First of all, Kevin, go to ncba.org, though, all the convention information's there. But uh, what you need to do is, is get ready for a great open general session. Um, we have Captain Scott Kelly, a naval hero. Bigger thing is for all those, come to the trade show. 360 exhibitors, so many companies launching new products at this year's convention. Mm -hmm. It's uh, February 5th through 7th. Yeah. So you can, you can actually register on site. You bet. Uh, simple to do. Oh, and by the way, we do like to have a little entertainment. So at Friday night, we have the uh, NCBA Invitational. And uh, it's, a, it's a PBR bull riding. And by the way, Kevin, I may have to see if we can get you on the back of one of those bulls. So. <laughs> I was thinking if you, mentioned, if you mentioned Marvin, Marvin will be one of the clowns. I well, think that'll be great. Uh, he here. always is one of those clowns, <laughs> but uh, there's so many uh, great things to see and do at convention. Uh, there's just like on the membership side, there's so many great uh, member benefits. So the key thing is, Go online to ncba.org, yep. check it all out. Yep. Um, if you have any questions, give the office a call. The number's on the website. And uh, again, take advantage of this oh, wonderful new member incentive. We have about 300,000 people watching this show. Yep. So we it's need great. a large percentage. And, and as we said, membership doesn't cost, it pays. It pays, absolutely. Thanks for coming, Marvin. So as Marvin mentioned, uh, there's some great reasons to become an NCBA member, and one of those is the chance to read the National Cattleman. It's the official publication of NCBA and provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become a NCBA member. Just call 1-866-233-3872, or as Marvin mentioned, visit the website ncba.org and use the word Marvin. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll have more on this year's Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. And that includes a look at some great places to grab a drink while you're in San Antonio. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind, we designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere, reimagined by you, for you. For a limited time, get 0% APR financing on qualifying 6 Series tractors and round balers. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. We're a little over a week away from the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show in San Antonio. Now you might be looking for some ideas to help pass the time between meetings. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Russell Nemitz shows us a one-of-a-kind saloon and museum that isn't far from the convention center. For almost 140 years, the Buckhorn Saloon and Museum has been one of San Antonio's most well-known gathering places for fun, food, and drinks. Well, the Buckhorn was established in 1881 by Albert Frederick. He was a 17-year-old bartender and bellhop at the old Southern Hotel on Main Plaza. In 1881, he decided to open his own saloon across the street on Dolorosa Street. He called it the Buckhorn. This is the fifth location of the saloon and museum since 1881. We've been in this building for 21 years. The first thing that catches your eye when you walk in the door are the hundreds of horns and antlers hanging from the walls and ceiling. Turns out, back in the day, the antlers were the currency folks used to buy a drink from owner Albert Frederick. He was a hunter himself. So he brought some of his own trophies in to decorate with, and his friends would say, I've got a big rack at home. He'd say, bring it in, I'll hang it up. When cowboys came in off the trail hot and thirsty from the cattle drive, they didn't have much money for drinks, Albert would take a pair of shed antlers and trade for beer. 
That's where you see thousands of antlers hanging up around the columns and the archways. Those were all free beers since 1881. Then his wife Emily was collecting rattlesnake rattles. She said, any cowboy that brings me a jar full of rattles gets a free shot of whiskey. She collected over 32,000 rattles and made signs and artwork out of them, which you see throughout the museum, including a white-tailed deer picture that she made from 637 rattles of a white-tailed deer and gave to Teddy Roosevelt as a gift when he came here for the second time in 1906 as president. We got a lot of longhorn steers on display, full mounts and heads. We have the largest collection of non-typical horns and antlers in the world throughout the entire museum. Albert liked what they call atypical horns and antlers, so they're deformed in some way. So they're very unusual, they're, like I said, throughout the entire collection. We have the largest uh, mass of horns in any animal in the world, which is the Angolan ox, which was um, Albert's prized possessions. And we have the 78-point buck, which is in the center of the bar, on the back bar over the, in the mirror. And old Tex right there, he was the world record longhorn at one time. His horns measure eight feet, one and a quarter inches from tip to tip, but he's been beat out over the years. But when Albert was alive, every night when he closed up shop, he detached the horns and locked them in his safe. He didn't want anybody stealing the world record of longhorns. In 2006, the Buckhorn Saloon and Museum expanded when the Texas Ranger Museum was added on to the attraction. Visitors will see hundreds of authentic Ranger artifacts, including antique revolvers, badges, photographs, and much more. And then about 12 years ago, we added the Texas Ranger Museum, which is included in the ticket price now. That's got an entire western street front built inside, a reproduction of Bonnie and Clyde's car, and Texas Ranger guns and memorabilia, which is all owned by the former Texas Rangers Association. And there were only like maybe a dozen Rangers in the beginning. And now today there are about 150 Texas Rangers, and they're the elite law enforcement of Texas. They're like the FBI here. They have jurisdiction in any county. They go in and take over cases that local sheriffs can't handle. Located just two blocks from the Alamo and one block from the Riverwalk, the Buckhorn Saloon and Museum and Texas Ranger Museum has something for everyone. So grab a refreshing drink and stroll through the more than 40,000 square feet of exhibit space that highlights Texas history. If you want to see the museum, you buy your tickets. You can purchase a drink on the way in and take it with you. You see more that way. And your ticket includes the Buckhorn Museum upstairs and the Texas Ranger Museum next door. I mean, it's a one of a kind experience. Reporting from San Antonio, Texas, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. There's another historic establishment less than a mile away from the Buckhorn Saloon and the Convention Center. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brad Bulla has the story of the Menger Hotel and its history. Right across the street from the historic Alamo in San Antonio, you'll find another piece of American history. The Menger Hotel is the oldest continually operating hotel west of the Mississippi. The hotel itself was built in 1859 by Mr. William Ahatius Menger, who came here from Germany. He was part of a wave of German settlers and immigrants who came here in the wake of Texas's independence from Mexico. When that happened, uh, Texas basically put out a call that we've got, we've got land, uh, come on down. And this made it all the way to Germany, actually. So he comes here in 1847, back when San Antonio is still a small frontier town, but rapidly growing. William Menger first founded a brewery, and that eventually led to him building the hotel. The brewery was an immediate success. It was actually so successful that he built a saloon because not everybody wanted to buy it by the barrel, which is what he was doing it. But then everybody loved the brew so much that they'd just literally drink themselves under the table, which upset the missus. And this gave him the idea of building a place for his guests to sleep it off. Years later, the business was sold to the Kottman family who expanded the hotel and added the unique Minger Bar. Under Major Common, he introduced a bunch of renovations to the hotel to modernize it, and he felt that the old saloon Mr. Minger had built uh, was no longer uh, in keeping with the rest of the hotel. So he actually hired somebody, hired an architect, to head over to London and take sketches of the House of Lords pub in the British Parliament, and he came back and he built the thing out of solid mahogany, which, fun fact, was more expensive back then than if he decided to make the whole thing out of solid marble. 
Being an old hotel, we can boast that we've had a lot of people of all types come through here. Uh, we've had Oscar Wilde come through here. We've had several men who were presidents or who would go on to be presidents. General Sherman and Grant came through here. Bill Clinton came through here before he was president. Uh, General Eisenhower, uh, Teddy Roosevelt came through here uh, with the Rough Riders. In fact, the famous Minger Bar is one of the places where Teddy Roosevelt recruited his Rough Riders back in 1898. So today, you'll find lots of Rough Rider memorabilia at the Minger. And over a drink, you can think back on all the history this place has seen, including Prohibition. Come Prohibition, of course, we had to disassemble it, but uh, the senior bartender at the time uh, was very passionate about making sure all the, uh, all the furnishings were carefully packed away and stored. The Manger actually has a rather extensive basement, kind of left over from the uh, brewery being here originally. So uh, it was put in storage, and once Prohibition was over, it was put back together again. Uh, but another interesting thing about our bar is the famous Prohibitionist Carrie Nation actually came to our bar. She carried hatchets, and so she'd walk into bars, ours included, and just start screaming about temperance, uh, the evils and vices of alcohol, and would literally start hacking away the bar. Even so, the Minger Bar still survives, and the hotel itself is connected to the many cattle drives that ran along the legendary Chisholm Trail that started right at this spot in San Antonio. We have an official marker for the Chisholm Trail right here in the garden. Modern day cowboys uh, can come here and know that they are, uh, they are basically following in the footsteps of, of all the Texas cowboys who came before them, because this is uh, literally the end of the trail. You know, it's the chance to come touch history, you know? Uh, that's the beautiful thing about an old, old building. It has been here 160 years. It'll be here many more decades to come. And it's that sense of continuity that just makes the Manger really special for the modern cowboy. Reporting from San Antonio, Texas, I'm Brad Bullock for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We're not done talking about next week's cattle industry convention. Still to come, we'll show you a great place to kick up your heels while you're in San Antonio. That story when we return. Simmons Brothers Limousine in Amherst, South Dakota is a fourth generation family operation that treats their cattle and their customers right. Service is one of our number one criteria. We offer a first year unconditional guarantee on the bulls. Simmons Brothers breeds top quality limousine bulls and females, focusing on the traits and the production that will put money in their customers' pockets. They were commercial cattlemen before they came into the limousine business. They're cattle feeders. They really know the kind of genetics that it takes to be successful. We're trying to bring a bull that that our customer would, would be able to put on any set of cows and those calves could earn a premium when he brings them to the sale barn. You can depend on limousine genetics from Simmons Brothers. Don't miss their 40th annual production sale at 1 p.m. Central Time, Thursday, February 27th. Call today to get a sale catalog and to find out more. Welcome back to Cattleman to Cattleman. Less than an hour from San Antonio is the Green Historic District. In addition to shopping and dining, this town, originally settled by German farmers, is home to the state's oldest and most famous dance hall. Lane Nordland takes us inside. Step on to the well-worn wooden floor at Green Hall, and in a way, you're stepping back in time. This iconic Texas dance hall was founded more than 140 years ago. Back in the mid-1800s, a gentleman named Ernst Green uh, immigrated over from Germany. He had a couple of sons that, um, in around 1870, established this area as a cotton community. Um, they had over 9,000 acres of cotton. They invited 20 to 30 sharecroppers to come um, help farm the land. Um, and with that, they then built what a community would need with that many people. They built a general store, they built a bank, a post office, um, a dance hall. They built the dance hall back in 1878, um, and it kind of became the social center uh, for Green. So it was a place to gather for weddings, for wakes, for community events, for dances. They actually had all night dances. 
So we have an ad from back in um, back in the early 30s that was an ad for an all night dance. They started at 8 p.m. and ended at 5 a.m. So after they worked all day, all week, they would come and dance and celebrate here at the hall. So it's, it's been a community um, center since it was built back in 1878. Even though many of the original buildings remain yet today, the small town fell on hard times during the Depression, and the one business that survived was Green Hall. The only place that remained open after everything else around closed was the dance hall. So it was the single thing that was still here. People still needed to drink beer. <laughs> they needed to celebrate. In the mid-1970s, Pat Mullock and Mary Jane Nally joined together to preserve Green Hall, and the town was added to the National Register of Historic Places. They kept the history but made the hall into an internationally recognized music venue. In fact, some of the biggest country music stars got their start right here. They concentrated on singer-songwriters with original music, so it became a place where you could come hear kind of the true Texas music that the local guys would play. George Strait actually started here back in 1979, I believe, um, and used to play shows with Ace and the Whole Band right here on this stage before he made it big. He was a regular for several years until the early 80s. So it became kind of like a, a proving ground, a place where musicians could come um, and play their music, get accepted by the crowds um, on their way to you know the next step. A lot of people consider that they've made it when they've played the Green Hall stage because it is such a historic venue for a singer-songwriter. You know, it's where the greats played. Um, it's where they still come back to play when they want an intimate show with the crowd, um, you know, just a few feet in front of them. Today, Green Hall remains a unique, laid-back place where you can visit, enjoy a cold drink, and listen to great music. We do have music seven days a week, so that sets us apart from some of the other dance halls that are only open on the weekends. And we have free live music seven days a week, and then most of our ticketed shows are gonna be Friday and Saturday nights, um, sometimes Thursday or weeknights, depending on tour schedules. Come check out uh, Green Texas and Green Hall, Texas' oldest continually operating dance hall when you're in San Antonio. We'd love to have you. Less than 45 minutes away from San Antonio at Historic Green Hall, I'm Lane Nordmund, reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you'd like to take in a country music show or maybe kick up your heels and dance, go to greenhall.com to see their calendar of events. Now don't forget, you still have time to join us in San Antonio and be a part of the amazing, educational, and fun Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. The convention officially gets underway next Wednesday and continues through Friday evening. One day registrations are also available right on site if you just want to pop in for a quick visit. Find out more at ncba.org. When we return, we'll check in with our good friend Baxter Black. Stay with us. Out here, you know what needs to be done, and you know what it means to those you're doing it for. But every sunrise brings something new with the weather, the soil, the markets, your machinery. You can't always predict what it will be. So it's good to know that Ram trucks are more than capable of helping you get it done right. Did you know that Prefort makes over a thousand different farm, ranch, and rodeo items? And now, thanks to Prefort Direct, it's easier than ever before to get access to every item Prefort makes delivered direct to your local dealer. For more information about Prefort Direct, visit us at prefort.com. Prefort, America's number one name in farm, ranch, and rodeo. Speaking about funny, Baxter Black has put together a six-hour 3-DVD collaboration of non-stop agro-humor. Baxter has been entertaining farmers and ranchers from Johnny Carson to Elko, Dolly Parton to Las Vegas, and Ark City to Martin, Tennessee. Treat yourself. It's like being there. Three DVDs for 25 bucks. Call 800-654-2550 or baxterblack.com. Did I say non-educational? Howdy and welcome to the Ag Trivia Quiz. This week our contestants are Tracto Man, Little Darlin', Little Darlin', good to see you. Oh, yes. 
and pick handle. I will read the subject and the multiple choice answers. When you know the right one, sound your gong. Question number one, polled cow. A, one that is turned out near the North Pole. B, one that is raised in Poland. Or C, one that has been contacted by George Gallup. <laughs> Little darling. C. Yeah, let's give her a hand, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give her a big hand. Good, all right, we're going to the next one. Hog finishing equipment. A. Lipstick in a sleazy bar. Well, darling. A. Wow, yes! Yes, that's correct, yes! Let's hear it for little darling. All right, you guys keep trying, keep trying. The next one, two inch ball. A. A bumper attachment. B. A short cry. Or C. A small dance floor. Little darling, you're so quick. Do you know the answer? B. That's close. <laughs> C. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh oh, that's so good. All right, open cow. One that is gullible to suggestion. B. The name of a new McDonald's burger. Or C. Instructions for doing a cesarean section. Yes. Um, Little darling, can you remember? No. Oh, it's an open cow. Okay. Open it, let me read them to you again. Gullible to suggestion, name of a new McDonald's burger, or instructions for doing a cesarean. That's correct, yes, all right. Let's hear it for Little Darling. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the Ag Trivia Quiz on Baxter Black from Alton Zane. Thanks, Baxter. We appreciate your contribution to our show each week. Now, are you worried because you missed an episode of Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD TV? Well, you're in luck. You can visit our YouTube page for replays of all of our shows, which are filled with educational segments and producer profiles from all across the country. So check out and subscribe to the Cattleman to Cattleman page on YouTube. We're back right after this. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Jennifer Houston. I'd like to invite you to join us at the 2020 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show deep in the heart of Texas. When the field is your office, you never get tired of going to work. Cut, break, bail, repeat. New Holland offers the power and versatility to get through the day. From small squares to large squares and everything in between, New Holland has you covered. Visit your local dealer today to find out more. If you're connected with the beef cattle business, then you should like the NCBA page on Facebook. The NCBA Facebook page shares photos, news, and valuable information about the beef cattle industry. You can also follow the NCBA Twitter feed at BeefUSA. So stay in touch with NCBA on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Here on Cattlemen and Cattlemen, we love to highlight the great work being done to promote beef all across the country. Recently, we had a chance to learn about a few of the ways members of the Kansas Beef Council are working to increase demand for beef in their state. For cattle producers in Kansas and elsewhere, ensuring that consumers keep choosing to buy beef is the foundation of profitability. That's one reason why state beef councils put checkoff dollars to work to share the facts about the value of beef in the diet. So beef as part of a heart healthy diet is something that we're making sure that we're providing a lot of information on and dispelling that myth of beef not being part of a healthy diet because maybe it has too much saturated fat or total fat. Beef today is not the same beef that our grandparents used to eat. 
due to the efforts of cattle ranchers and farmers throughout the United States, our beef is leaner than it has ever been before with over two thirds of the cuts that you're gonna find in the grocery store being sold, falling under the USDA designation of lean. So it can be incorporated in that heart healthy diet. And we have a lot of standardized um, gold standard research that actually backs up those claims. The Kansas Beef Council is using a variety of communication methods, including some unique ads on social media that show how real beef comes from just one simple ingredient. I think the focus is to showcase beef's nutrients and its powerful protein package with that one simple ingredient. Once you see that and show comparative nutritional data with some of those meat alternatives, our lean beef provides a great source of those 10 essential nutrients with typically less calories, less total fat, less saturated fat, less sodium, and more protein than many of those meat alternatives. So another ad that we're showcasing is called our Heartland Recipe Series, and we're actually, so we have two different um, platforms that are running on this particular monitor. This is the Heartland Recipe Series, and it's actually showcasing three chefs throughout the state of Kansas that have created a unique beef recipe that is kind of unique to Kansas or to the Midwestern states. And this one has Alex Pope from Kansas City. He is a local chef from the local pig actually. And he's created a bacon wrapped beef meatloaf, which is quite tasty with barbecue sauce and everything else. A lot of our um, checkoff funded research is what is getting into the hands of consumers when we're doing campaigns like this. We're making sure that they're seeing how beef can be incorporated into one of those healthy, balanced diets and help them get all of those essential nutrients within that tiny caloric package. Kansas, along with other states, joins together in the Federation of State Beef Councils to use checkoff dollars in the most efficient way with the aim of returning value to cattle producers. As a registered dietitian, I really think that it's critical for the beef industry to promote their product. No one else is going to invest the dollars to research that one individual product, which is beef. So it really is the responsibility of beef producers to provide that resource, um, research and education to consumers about their product, showcasing how it really can fit within that healthy and balanced diet as one simple ingredient. In Kansas, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Well, that wraps up this edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for spending time with us. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.